Hey, 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 turkeys. What's going on, you jive turkeys? Turkeys and pilgrims alike. And Native Americans, if there's any of you listening. Thank you so much for the for listening and for the land. Happy Thanksgiving week, everyone. A brisk, lovely Thanksgiving week, 2023. Episode 13 of the World Famous Laser Show. We're into the teens, huh? Look at us. And what a doozy. I'll take a break from all these, a lot of stand-up episodes I've been doing and tell a pretty fun story from back in the day, back in my heyday. Here's the story of the two times I auditioned for SNL. That's right, folks. You know, sometimes people will, I'll put out a sketch or something. One of my really good sketches, which is, I would say, just about all of them, really. But sometimes people will comment or send me a message and go, man, you got to go out for SNL. You got to do it. And, well, guess what, you dipshit. I already did. And I'm not allowed to ever again. That's the rule. Not because I did anything naughty and bad. Just because that was their rule that they gave me. We'll get to it. I auditioned for SNL twice. People don't often know this story. I don't, but I haven't told it, really. Because truly, who gives a shit? But here you go. Back in 2013, this is when it all began. Back in 2013 is when I first auditioned for SNL. What a young buck I was. 2013, I must have been. I was, tw- I was oh, I turned t- uh, 25. That very, <laughs> as I, it was on my birthday, I went out to New York. My 25th birthday. Oh, the promise I had. Oh, the potential. And still do. Don't worry. Don't worry, Tony. Relax, Tony. My friend Tony says that Blazer show is too depressing and I'm too self-deprecating. So I got to keep it positive for Tony. It's too depressing for Tony to listen to on his commute between his two homes. So I'll keep it positive, okay, Tony? I have plenty of potential, but back in 2013, holy Christ, did I have even more. And that's just how time works, okay, Tony? So back in 2013, I, well, I've never wanted to, I've never considered going out for SNL. I haven't watched SNL since I was probably seven years old. If you're watching SNL currently, you're insane. From what I've seen, it is it sucks. What are you doing? But people still watch it in droves. But back in 2013, I, uh, I mean, I'd been, you know, Dead Kevin was, was rocking and rolling. My sketch group had some, uh, had some managers and some agents. I was at UTA, the agency UTA. We don't like them. We want them to burn, folks. We don't like UTA. But back in the day, oh, I did. I thought they were great. I was with this big agency UTA and this big um, uh, management company, Mosaic. No longer with either of those places. But back in the day, when Dead Kevin was rocking and rolling, and I had a video on... Uh, on uh, the Laugh Factory YouTube page. I used to get up at the Laugh Factory. I don't think I've been up at the Laugh Factory, man, since probably like 2015 or something. I don't even know how to. I don't know how these clubs work. But back in the day, I uh, got up at the Laugh Factory a, a couple times, and then I had clips on the Laugh, which are still up on YouTube, on the Laugh Factory page. And they would get uh, so many views. They'd put up stand-up clips from people. And I had a clip up there. Um, it was a lot. It was like it was a. The, it was my world famous Doctor Scholl's joke. Surely you know it. It was a real. It was one of my favorites in 2013. And it was a long act out. And I used to do a lot of long act outs, um, but this one was a, just a just a real banger. And Laugh Factory decided to uh, put it up on their YouTube. Got a bunch of got a bunch of views, and that's cool. Felt good to get some. Some attention and stuff. And uh, then that was that. And then, so that was like 2012 that must have happened. So then in 2013, I get some sort of an email, I'd imagine. I'd imagine it was an email. Maybe it was a phone call uh, from my manager at the time. And says, 
SNL saw your Laugh Factory clip, and they want you to audition for SNL. Now, I don't do accents. I don't do character. I don't do, like, impressions. I'm terrible at impressions. I feel uh, really unprepared for this moment and really feel like I'm just really not ready for it. But uh, my manager's like, can you put together a, a uh, uh, an audition tape, like a five-minute audition tape, do some characters? And so I did that, and they didn't have, like, accents or, you know, they weren't impressions. They were just, like, little act-outs like I would do in my video because they liked that video. So I'm like, this is, this is a, it's just like a scene. It's not like a character, really. But I sent in five minutes of that, and they loved it. And, uh... Geez, just a, a couple weeks, maybe a month later, they uh, I get an email or a call or whatever it was. And manager says they loved your tape. You they want to send you out to to New York, not to do the audition yet, just to go and schmooze. They want you to go and schmooze with some of the writers and producers or at, at SNL. And. I don't know, I, it was like Seth Myers and all the bunch of, bunch of big wigs out there. You got to go meet these people, she says. But this was, this was my birthday weekend. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't, my birthday weekend, I do what I want, goddammit. And what I want is to do Molly and dance. But really, back in the day, I was also in a big... I was constantly fighting with my girlfriend, and we were on the up and down, and then uh, she had big plans for my birthday weekend, and I was so scared. It was going to be a big fight. And uh, I was like, hey, can I... Is there any other time I could like schmooze with these people? Or is this like their only weekend uh, for schmoozeability? Uh, manager's like, let me... It's, I was like, it's my birthday. Can I? Are they do? Are they doing these like multiple weekends, or do I have to go this weekend? Because it's my birthday. My birthday's a rocking good time. If you haven't been, it's a rocking good time. Um, maybe not so much in 2013. Honestly, not at all. But really, I was just mostly just like scared of my girlfriend at the time. So, so manager says, okay, let me uh, let me ask, let me ask SNL or or whatever. She rats me out. She hits up UTA. And if you recall, we want UTA to burn. But back in the day, I was with these big wigs at UTA. Like one of the, so like one of the, there's like four like major, the four top like agents. And then there's just like uh, fucking a hundred agents below them. And then a million junior agents. But there's like four like head dudes, head, the big agents there. The top one, Josh Katz. I talked to him once ever in my life, and this was that conversation. He called me directly. I've never heard from him. I met him when I first met him. He seemed like a nice enough guy, and then I never heard from him again. Until this day, I get a call from Josh Katz. Holy shit, Josh Katz is calling me. Did I book SNL already? He calls me. He goes, hey, it's your birthday this weekend, I hear. I go, it is, yeah. He goes, happy birthday. Guess what? You're going to New York. And you're going to meet with these SNL people. And he was a bit of a jerk. Hope he's doing well. But I hope the company burns. And uh, he says, you're going to New York. Sorry. And I said, okay. I had to go to New York. I had to break it to my girlfriend that her, her big plan. I never, never knew what it was going to be. <laughs> we broke up pretty soon thereafter. Um, and so I went to New York. I went to New York with several other uh, of their top choices. There was maybe 10 of us. And this was the, this was 2013. They ended up casting, I think, five new people. And I think I, I, think I made it to like the, I think, that was, I think I counted 13, if I recall. None of this I can uh, super attest to. But I, I remember it being about 13 people that they flew out and to mingle Five of them, and, well, we'll get there, we'll get there. So I go and I'm mingling with these writers and these other comics, some of them I know, and Seth Myers, he's from New Hampshire, he has a dog, he was showing me pictures of his dog, and I don't mingle. I don't mingle that well, not in these, like, situations. 
I'm great at just a hang, just a hang at a bar. And that's really all this was. It was like a hang at a bar, but it was with all these SNL people. So I was pretty nervous. One of them was SNL alum, Brooks Whelan. And if you listen to his podcast, we talked about it a bit, and he <laughs> told me his point of view on that weekend. And he was basically telling me, yeah, you weren't, really. You weren't schmoozing. You were, I was like, Ryan, you got to get in there. And that's true. I'm not, uh, you know, I was a little shy. And didn't really, I don't I don't schmooze that well, and but I did talk to I remember talking to Seth Meyers and he was very nice. I didn't make any sort of impression on him. No way. It was very just a he was showing me his dog and I was like cool cool dog. What is the its age? What is the age of the dog and the name of it? And so that went like that. And it you know that was just like a hang. And then. The hang, I guess, went well enough where they flew me back to do an audition on the stage. And it was a lot of the same people from the schmooze. And the audition on the on the SNL stage at 30 Rock, you have to do your audition that you did in the tape live. And all the writers and producers are just sitting there in like a, like a judge's kind of booth and taking notes. And they sometimes they give you a polite laugh. But usually it's like pretty quiet. I don't know why I say usually, like I've seen any of the other ones. But that's what I've heard. But I got a couple chuckles. I felt pretty good about it. It was like, uh, what's his name? John Mulaney, Seth Meyers, Lorne Michaels. All the fucking dudes. And the and the booker, Lindsay. Lindsay was like the talent booker. Ultimately, Lorne Michaels decides everything. But Lindsay was the talent booker. She went on to uh, date uh, Ben Affleck for a while. Good for her. Or maybe it was before this. I don't know. Not at all important. But she loved me. More than anyone else. She was like uh, leading the charge. Uh, trying to get me a spot on SNL. Do my audition on the stage. Uh, went pretty well. Plenty of comics um, were there this day. They were... Uh, they were Brooks Whelan, of course, John Milheiser, SNL alum. These are the people they ended up booking that year was Brooks, um, John Milheiser, Noel Wells, Kyle Mooney, and Beck Bennett. I believe those were just the, maybe there was one more, but I, it was those five. So it was me and all those people, and then some people that also didn't get it who are also great, Marquez Ray and Jimmy Fowley. Still friends with those dudes to this day. What a thing we went through together, huh? And then, uh, then we have to meet. Oh, so I meet a bunch of the SNL cast. I met a lot of them. I met Cecily Strong and Kate McKinnon and Colin Jost, among others. And everyone was very nice. And then I met Lorne. So then I have the famous Lorne meeting. I got that far. In SNL lore, that's you got to have the Lorne meeting. You just go into his office and he eats popcorn at you. And he has a hundred tiny little frames on his desk facing him. Who knows what they are? I imagine they're just pictures of him. And he's just, and it's just me and Lorne. And he is fucking housing popcorn. And I don't know what to say. Dude, I don't do impressions. I don't do accents. Uh, you know, and I, I'm just, I'm lost in here. I'm just telling him a bit about myself and my stand-up and my sketch group. and I don't know. I think I said the word cool about 600 times. I remember to ask, I was just asking him as many questions as I could. I was like, let him just do the talking and tell me what he expects of me. Please don't let me talk too much. And he was telling me how it all works at SNL. And I'm going, cool. That's so cool. Cool. He's got like a bulletin board in there with hosts and guests. And I'm looking, he's like, those are the, go, the hosts and the guests, not the ghosts. And, and I'm just going, cool, cool. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you for showing me that. Cool. That was my Lorne meeting. I leave there, um, and I go back to L.A., and I don't book SNL. And that's okay. Didn't book it. They made it to the final, I think, 13. And they casted about five. And I thought that was a pretty cool experience. I got to meet Seth Meyers. I, it sounds like an awful time. Being on SNL, I would not want to do that, I don't think. 
it seems really stressful and I'm pretty lazy. And, but in the time that between the audition and I heard that I didn't get it, which was a while, it was like a month. Because I was in July, and they don't start filming till September, so they really cast it in like in August, I think. And uh, I, I really just I was I didn't know if I should even if I got it if I should even do it. I feel like I would kill myself. It seems so stressful, and I have to move away from all my friends, and I'm just getting comfortable in L.A. with my with just like got friends, you know, and I'm like happy and I'm feeling good, and. In, in LA at the time and I kind of was like man I don't I'm so stressed out would I dare I turn down SNL if I get it I wouldn't have I would have done it and it would have made my life way better but uh anyway I never got it so I didn't have to make that decision thank goodness and then so that was that 2014 rolls around and my manager once again reaches out she goes hey SNL wants to see, or SNL wants you to know that they want you to audition again. They're going to let you audition again. But they're only going to let you audition again one more time. Two times is all you're going to get. So you can either do the audition this year. This was in like July again. So the, they're, you know, not a lot of time to practice any characters or anything. She goes, so you can do the audition this year and, like, get me a tape, send in a tape in the next couple of weeks, or wait till next year, hone your characters, work on some accents and some impressions, and come back next year. I said, hell no, I'm not doing that. I'm going out this year, and I'm going to work on no impressions or accents. And uh, just be the same exact person uh with no further talents because hey life's too short what am i gonna do spend a year working on who cares like i'm not gonna get that much better what am i gonna practice a fucking accent or an impression for a year how, how lame is that sorry if you're an impressionist and you do that all the time but how fucking lame is that like once a day 10 minutes a day i just practice I got some. I tried so I tried some auditions in this one. I tried Ray Romano. Hey, Robert. And my manager said, "Take that one out." And then I tried that old man from uh Big Fish. This is n- <laughs> I was, I told you this is not how I go. And my manager said, "Take that one out. That's not good." And then I did Maybe I kept Ray Romano in. I forget, but she definitely told me to, oh, that, yeah, it was like Ray Romano, like, burning his finger or something, you're just going like, ah, like, that's so lame, and she was like, keep that one in just to have some audition, but the, uh, told me definitely to take the old man from Big Fish out, because it was bad, and also no one knows who it is, yo, asshole, that's my Jesse Pinkman, asshole, hey, asshole, yo, asshole, but that was, I didn't start mastering that one until years later. But that one's really, really good. I know, I know. That I probably would have gotten SNL if I had seen Breaking Bad at the time. But I didn't watch Breaking Bad till, till later. So, do my, uh, my self-tape. And my manager just like, just have the last two minutes. Just It's a five-minute tape. She goes, Has to have the last two minutes. Um... Just be like a stand-up set. Because they like this stand-up set. This like joke that you do. Just do like a joke. Not a set. Why am I calling it a set? Do like a joke. A bit. A two-minute bit. And I used to have this bit uh, about like movies. About how when you hear... It was kind of racist, I guess. It was like when you hear like a... Um, like a Middle Eastern like music at the beginning of a movie that you know it's gonna be a good movie when a movie starts with like a sunrise and say like, and I used to do that joke and it'd get a big laugh. I probably couldn't wouldn't want to do that joke. That's, it was pretty good, I guess. You know what? I stand by it. It was a good joke, God damn it. And SNL saw that and liked it, and she goes, they liked this bit. They saw that somehow. I don't know. It was online or something, or I sent it. I don't fucking remember. They, she said, just do that. So I did some impressions and some characters and that joke. 
and they liked my tape. They flew me out to SNL again. Oh my God, I just remembered a big detail from the first year. Hold on, I'm so sorry I got a rewind. So after my schmooze, after my schmooze day, and before I went back to New York to audition on stage, I did the audition on stage in LA, an SNL showcase in LA at IO Theater that Lorne Michaels came to and sat in the dead center of the theater. And there was just a light, not on purpose, but there was a light that was just like right on him. And he was just sitting there and he was smiling. Remember him smiling during my, my audition? I was laughing. Oh, I killed my audition. I did so well. So then, yes, yes, yes. So then they flew me out to New York to do that live in, or in New York. That one was like a crowd at like a, like a show with people at it. And I smashed it to bits. A lot of us did so great. The whole show was so good. But I felt really, really good about that. I killed it. And so then they flew me out to New York and did the audition there and didn't get it. Okay, now we're back in 2014. So they fly me out to SNL again, do the, do the audition on the stage. I do the audition on the stage. It goes well. Same thing, you know, same setup as last time. Different audition, of course, but same same thing. Th- this was the year that I, I met Pete Davidson backstage. This was the year they cast Pete Davidson. <laughs> so I met Pete Davidson, and he was super nice. He must have been fucking like 21 at the time. 22. He was this young kid, and I was like 26, I guess. And, uh, and so, no, he was older. I don't know. I don't fucking know how old Pete Davidson is. But I could have been Pete Davidson, goddammit. I could have smooched on Kim. But, uh, do the audition goes well. And the, this is a fun little thing I did. The, the, so the Booker Lindsay, as I mentioned, she was the one leading the charge both years. She, she loved me. She really wanted me to be on SNL. But ultimately, Lauren Michaels did not like me as much. And he gets final say. And, um, I don't know, maybe she said this to everybody. But we went to lunch one day, me and the, me and the booker at SNL, Lindsay Shookus. Coolest lady on the damn planet. She dated Ben Affleck for a while, if you recall. And we go to lunch, and she was close with my manager. So, like, this is why I brought up my big wig managers I used to have. My manager, her name was Molly. She, she was close with Lindsay Shookus. Lindsay Shookus says, hey, let's play a prank on your manager. Let's... Let's, we came up with it together. I don't know. It was her idea to prank, um, call my manager. And I think it was my idea on how to do it. She says, let's prank her and say that you like never came. You never made it to lunch. Cause it would be a big deal if I missed lunch with my scheduled lunch with the head of casting at SNL in New York. So I said, I'll pretend like I'm drunk and, um, that I didn't make it to the, <laughs> to the meeting. I'll call her and be like, just say I'm so drunk. And I called her, and it was one of the most intense pranks I've played on someone because I made Molly's life go crashing down. It was, I called, and she goes, hello? And I rarely call. I never called her. I would text. I would text. We would text. And uh, I called her, and I was, she was like, hello? And I was like, eh, eh, eh. Oh, no, Lindsay texts. So Lindsay texts her and goes, Ryan never made it. That's what it was. Lindsay, the, the casting person, te- texted um, Molly and says, Ryan's not here. Where is he? We're supposed to have lunch. Molly calls me freaking out. Where are you? And I go, uh, I'm drunk. I'm in my hotel. She's like, you're drunk? You're in your hotel? And I was like, yeah, I forgot. Uh, what's the time? She goes, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. I did this prank for, man, it, it couldn't have been more than 30 seconds. I, my, I thought Molly was going to kill herself. And it was so scary to do this prank. And I go, I'm kidding. Molly, I'm kidding. I'm here with Lindsay right now. And oh my God, the relief in Molly's voice. It was the, one of the scariest pranks I've ever, prayed, and I, I've ever played. And I said, this was Lindsay's idea. This was all Lindsay's idea. She goes, I was about to call Josh Katz. <laughs> oh my God, can you imagine? If she had called Josh Katz, my biggest fan. Uh, so, so that, so, so suffice it to say, I was pretty in with these people. Oh, by the way, when I went back for the second year, I went into the Dirty Rock again and, you know, met some of the cast. And you know who remembered the hell out of me? Was Colin Jost. I walked in and Colin Jost went, Ryan O'Flanagan. I was like, what's up, Colin Jost? He really liked me from that last year. Or maybe he just read a list of who was coming. 
but he knew my name. He remembered my name in some way. So he's my favorite. He's my favorite. He's the nicest. And uh, so then I have the lunch with Lindsay, do the audition again. Now I have uh, another meeting with Lauren. This time, there are two of the head writers in the room. Me, Lauren, two writers. Me facing Lauren face to face. I'm across from him. He's behind his desk. I'm facing him. These two writers, uh, they are perpendicular. They are staring at us from the sidewall. And now it's just uh, pretty similar to the year before, but now just with more people in the room. Kind of just like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I can, I don't do a ton of impressions, but I can, you know, I'll, I'll try. Really just not selling myself, as I do. And that goes how it goes. It's fine. I am who I am. <laughs> and uh, I think it went a little better than the first year. I will say it was a little, I was a little more prepared of, uh, you know, how to present myself. I didn't say cool as many times, I think. I said, I'm a fucking idiot. Don't cast me. That's what I said. But no, I think it went okay. And then, uh, so then I leave New York. I go back to, by the way, this, my, my poor sweet friend. So like last, the first year was a panic because it was my birthday and I didn't want to get in a fight with my girlfriend. This year, my friend, the only friend from home who's ever come to visit me, my buddy Andrew, who owes me $300. But we used to be really good friends and he came to visit me and he's the only person who's ever visited me. He came to visit me for two days in LA. And on the first day he was here, we went on a hike. And during that hike, I got a phone call from my manager that said, SNL really liked your tape. You got to go to New York tomorrow to audition. And I was like, oh, I hate to ask two years in a row if we can push it. But man, my friend is is in town and he's only in town for today and tomorrow. And they go, so sorry, you got to you gotta go tomorrow. That's how fast they would do things. Man, fuck SNL. No regard for people's lives and perhaps having birthdays and perhaps having friends visit them fuck those people but so i fly out and then all that stuff happened and then i went back home and uh or i was told that there was they were down to the final three and it was me and pete davidson and andrew santino were the final three contestants in uh 2014 and Pete got it. I've heard from Andrew that he said it was down to me and Pete. So I believe I got third place that year. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then I met Pete Davidson again, if you listen to this podcast, religiously, which is, I know, thousands and thousands of you. Right, Tony? And, uh, yeah, I met Pete again in Raleigh. And, of course, he didn't remember me, but he was a nice enough guy. And that's that's the end of that story, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. That's my SNL story. Fun little trip down memory lane. So then after SNL, literally the day I flew out, um, that second time, 2014, I went. I had a very early flight. And I flew straight to L.A. And I Ubered straight from L.A. to the Fox lot to film my episode of New Girl. And that's going to be my next episode. I'll tell that whole tale. It's pretty funny. There was some magic involved. There was some Zoe involved. And there was a whole lot of jet lag. You know what I'm saying? But that's my SNL story. Hope you liked it. And uh, probably back to some... After New Girl, probably back to some... Uh, some stand-up some stand up podcasts. The biggest development, if you are coming to see me on the road... Please come see me on the road. I got a uh, bunch of shows coming up in December after the holiday here. And before the other holiday there, a lot of Midwest, Wisconsin, Iowa, Indiana, Illinois, a little bit East, Pittsburgh, Louisville, uh, you know, Indiana, uh, old Columbus, Ohio. So come to those. And next year, by the way, I've got shows uh, in Tex in Dallas and Austin and New Orleans. If you're in the area and you want to like add to that, hit me up, up to like Tulsa and then Wisconsin again. So blah, blah, blah. But the biggest development is that if you are going to come see me in um, Des Moines, they didn't even put the tickets on sale, so I don't know if anyone was going to. They never put the tickets on sale. They canceled the show, 
and they just had to move it. In their defense, they have tried to move it, but I looked at their website, and I have been replaced with a karaoke night at Teehee's Comedy Club in Des Moines. So now, on December the 8th, I'm going to be in Sioux Falls. Yeah, she does. South Dakota. On this Friday, December 8th. Very uh, ex- excited. <laughs> this very nice place just just hooked it up. I just reached out in desperation. And I'm performing at a, uh, a place that's a, a Chicago and Mediterranean fusion Chicago style food, Chicago food, and with a Mediterranean, a Caribbean twist, a Caribbean twist. That's what it is, not Mediterranean. Anyway, interesting shit. So come see me in Sioux Falls, December eighth. All the other dates remain the same. And that was episode thirteen of Laser Show. I'll see you for episode fourteen. Happy uh, Thanksgiving, everybody. Woo!